So let's talk about rubber. Uh, we would focus on natural rubber as well as synthetic rubber. Now natural rubber is interesting. How it is obtained? It is obtained from the latex of the rubber tree. So rubber tree is cut in a uh, cross section and the latex is being collected in a pot. Now this latex which is collected in the pot gives the natural rubber. Now this natural rubber originally has isoprene as the constituent. Now when there is a chain of isoprene joining together, we have the natural rubber that forms. And what is the arrangement? It is a cis 1,4 polyisoprene arrangement. Now the cis arrangement means that what is there? There are weak van der Waal forces and since there are weak van der Waal forces the benefit is it has the ability to stretch come back to the original proper uh, position that means it has elastic properties. So the cis structure of the natural rubber gives it the weak van der Waal forces. The weak van der Waal forces are responsible for the elasticity or the elastic nature. That means it can be stretched like a spring and come back regain its original shape and therefore we call it as a cis form. Now there are various cross links that are to be established with this. Now what happens when there are double bonds that means there is unsaturation. So vulcanization of rubber is done. Under vulcanization that means the natural rubber becomes very soft when the temperature is high. It becomes brittle if the temperature is low. So in order to have this vulcanized, to have its strength, what happens is these double bonds are removed and you have sulfur which is reacted to it. Now this property is what is known as vulcanization. So the rubber is heated with sulfur at adequate temperature range. This is 373 to 415 Kelvin and the reactive double bond sites are bonded Rather than the double bonds, you have sulfur that can be witnessed here. This sulfur gives it a stiff characteristic. It becomes more stiff and that, therefore the tire rubbers which are manufactured, there is 5% sulfur which is put into it and this leads to vulcanization. So this is the process of what is called as vulcanization of rubber. Very, very important. Now, uh, the most important is the vulcanized rubber has its own property to improve on the existing properties. Vulcanization is done and with vulcanization the usage in the daily life can be enhanced. Now this is so far the polymer of isoprene. Isoprene is a natural rubber. Now we talk about synthetic rubber. There are two important synthetic rubbers that we would talk about today. One is neoprene, the other is buna S, buna N. Okay. So first talk about let's neoprene. Neoprene is what? Chloroprene when polymerized gives you neoprene. So synthetic rubber is like any other vulcanized natural rubber and the idea is the this synthetic rubber has twice the stretching capacity to its length. So let's say its original length is L, it can stretch up to 2L. So it can have twice the stretching capacity and this is what is the specific characteristics of a synthetic rubber. It has an extreme stretching capability in contrast to the natural rubber and here we have neoprene. Neoprene is nothing but the polymerization of chloroprene. It is used uh, for making belts, gaskets. A gasket is one of the common uses where neoprene is used. Neoprene is also used in making hose. Uh, conveyor belts is made of neoprene. And this is important because this neoprene is resistant to various kinds of oils, be it the vegetable oil or the mineral oil. The next that we understand is buna S. Under buna S, butadiene reacts with acronitrile to form buna S and this is a copolymerization. Now here, uh, the most important property is it is resistant to the action of any lubricating oil, uh, resistant to organic solvents, resistant to petroleum and therefore is used where it is used in oil tanks, it is used in sealing the oil, it is used in uh, the linings of the tanks 
because it is resistant to organic solvents it is resistant to lubricating oils it is resistant to petroleum and therefore has multiple usage so buna buna s has definitely higher usage now any polymer that we talk about have certain properties this could be the molecular size the molecular structure the molecular mass and the growth of the polymer in a chain reaction would depend on what kind of monomers are available in the reaction based on the length of the monomers the average expression the molecular mass you would have the strength the chemical properties and the physical properties that would be determined so here we have understood what is a natural rubber vis-a-vis -vis a synthetic rubber under synthetic rubber we have talked about two important ones neoprene and buna s buna s is mainly used for tank linings oil sealings however neoprene print is used for hoses gas cats conveyor belts and is usually formed from uh, the chloroprene so that's the major difference between the two synthetic rubbers that we have talked and these synthetic rubbers in contrast to isoprene so isoprene itself is important the chemical structure of isoprene is important commonly asked for your examination as well so these are the things that you need to understand while we are focusing about rubber